Okay, so it's uh, been about eight hours since the last video that I recorded where we set up Supervisor and got our unicorn process to run in the background. And uh, as you can see, I am not logged into anything. I'm not running any sort of process, but nevertheless, our Django app carries on through the night serving up counts, which is uh, pretty cool. And so uh, the next thing I want to cover is just how to configure Unicorn a little bit more. And the config setting in particular that we want to set is the number of workers, which is the number of uh, separate subprocessors that Unicorn will be running. I think it's subprocessors, maybe it's like uh, threads or something. I don't really know. Um, we'll find out. But basically, you want to tell Unicorn to have multiple workers so that it can serve more requests at the same time. Um, if you have too few workers and multiple people all try to access your website, then um, Unicorn will not be able to serve them all and some of them will have to wait um, or they, I don't know, like it's mirror or something, I don't know. Or if you have too many workers, it's sort of just uh, there's like some redundancy there and you're just kind of using up system resources for no additional benefit. And so we sort of just account with the number of workers is three because we have one CPU core, I think, and uh, three seems like the formula that they suggest. So that's what we're going to do. Um, right, so I'm just going to show you how we're going to configure Unicorn. Um, and in addition, I want to show you how I kind of came to decide on how to do it. So I went to the Unicorn website, which is here, and I clicked on their documentation. And took me to here and you can see they show you that you can run unicorn and then pass a number of workers parameter and they've sort of got all of the configuration arguments here uh, or do they I got them in here somewhere settings maybe um, and they also showed us that you can use a check config sort of thing which is cool and they also sort of show you how to set up their configuration file. Um, yeah, some shit in my mouth. So it's actually a Python file, which is cool. So I just read all of this and decided to do what they said. So let's give that a crack. Um, so in addition to setting the number of workers, we're also going to be configuring Unicorn's logging. And so the configuration file will be handy for that as well in the video after this. Right, so in config, let's add unicorn.conf.py like they recommend and according to them it is just a python file and i'm going to skip the bit where we import multi-processing yeah it's great so they're just python objects variables where you assign this one's a string if you recall we bound to 0.0.0, .0 on port 80 because um, we want it to be on the default HTTP port and our new configuration is we want three workers. Done. Um, pretty easy. In addition, we also want um, Supervisor D to run Unicorn using this config. So what we're going to do is instead of saying bind this, we're going to give the dash C parameter or argument or whatever. And we're going to give it the app. Con, no, is it, what do we call our file? Like Unicorn.conf.py. Uh, and it was an app conf. Cool. Now we could specify this as a relative path. We could say that this is in, if we're in shoot, we could go up one config, blah, blah, blah. But If it's simple to do, um, and, and you're pretty sure that the path will never change, I prefer to use an absolute path like this, just because it now doesn't matter what this working directory is. This can change, but this is uh, going to stay the same. All right, so we've got our unicorn conf, that number of workers. We've got our supervisor deconf. Let's uh, upload this to the server. And uh, hopefully this is getting boring now. I hope you're bored, which is good because um, if you're bored, it means you're comfortable. 
And if you're not bored, well, we're just going to do it again and again and again until you are bored and comfortable. Um, right, so let us nuke the deploy directory on the server. So we're going to SSH as root into our Tute server and we're going to run RMRF, which is remove recursively force the root deploy folder. So regardless of whether the folder is there or not, it won't be there after we run this command, which is nice. And we're going to RMRF our deploy folder, Ooh, desktop, bad idea, deploy. So if deploy was here, oh shit, um, actually. I am in C uses Matt D and I want to go into my Django project before I start nuking things. Okay, RM RF deploy. That's better. Cool. And let's deploy our configuration and scripts again. So I'm going to make a deploy here. I'm going to um just copy the things I need in this case. Which is just config, isn't it? Because I didn't change any scripts. Yeah. And let us then use SCP recursively to copy our deploy folder as root onto our server into the folder root, which is the home directory of the root user. And copy two files. Plus cd, no, plus ssh, as root at toot server into our server. Cool, we're in our server. Let's go into our deploy directory, which we've just recreated. Let's go into config. Now we could run that crazy ass command with find and xarx and dos to unix, um, but it might just be easy to run dos, dos to unix on. Let's try dot start. So this is uh, in this current working directory, all files. And that seems to work. Cool. So everything's been converted. Right. And if you recall or don't recall, dust Unix uh, converts the Windows line endings in these files into Unix format line endings, which is just what we're doing to, to make sure we avoid any sort of fuck up later on. Um, I don't know if it's necessary with these config files, but I don't want to find out. And it's easy to just convert these over. Okay, um, I guess the way I'm going to do this is just nuke the config directory in the app folder and then copy this config folder into the app folder. So now I know that the config in the app folder is the one that we just created. Let's jump into there. Let's have a look at the unicorn thing we just made. Well, that looks like valid Python to me. Um, yep. And let us have a look at our supervisor D config. Um, yep. And let's have a look at our command. Just double check. It seems to be right. Right. So let's go back. Now, what we want is for. Um, we want supervisor D to restart and reload its new config. And when it does that, we want it to re reload unicorn with its new config. So I think all we need to do to get this to work is to restart supervisor D. Um, if you've forgotten what supervisor D is, it is the process here that we have gotten to babysit unicorn here. And so supervisor D runs with this config file that we wrote. And by changing this config file, it will change the command that it's using to run Unicorn. So let's give that a go. Now we interact with supervisor D via supervisor CTL, which is a like a client program which uh, communicates with a, a server which supervisor D presents. And uh, let's just see what options we have. Oh, sorry. We need to activate our virtual environment from a bar because if you recall, supervisor CTL 
is in our virtual environment and it's uh, not on the path until we activate the virtual environment. All right, uh, that aside, let's try that. Uh, cool, cool. Oh, let's drop it into a shell. I think we can use reload, but you know why? I take chances. Let's just check the docs. And you might be thinking like, Matt, you lazy fuck, why don't you just do your homework and find this out beforehand? And the reason is partly because I'm a lazy fuck who doesn't want to do his homework and partly because I think it's actually helpful for you to see how I am figuring this stuff out because then you can do it too. So running supervisor CTL in the supervisor D docs and all of the things we can do. And it looks like restarts the remote supervisor D. So this is going to restart supervisor D and I assume all of the child programs as well, um, which if we had more than one child program running like unicorn and some other important shit that we care about, then we wouldn't want to do this because it's going to restart them as well. But in this case, we don't care because it's only one thing. So let's run reload. So let's run supervisor CTL reload. It restarted. Cool. Um, and let's have a look at the logs. Now we've been using cat to look at log files so far. So if you recall in the app folder, supervisor D when we ran it, dumped this log file here and it allows us to see some of what supervisor D is doing and we can cat it, which just means print the whole file to the screen. Um, and let's see, it is. 851 in Australia and on this server in New York, it is 22.50. What's the time in New York right now? Oh, Jesus, who even knows? What time zone is this server in? This kills me. I, I can't bother figuring this out. Um, all right, cool. So the logs not telling us much, but if we assume that this is recent, it restarted, it all worked, and it loaded Unicorn, cool. But let's not just trust that. Let's use HTOP to have a look at the process tree. Um, so if you're in HTOP, you can press F5 to switch between the tree view and the sorted by, I think it is like memory or CPU usage view or something. Oh, there you go. So in, I think the default view, it sorts by CPU usage. And in the F5 tree view, it shows you a process tree. I don't know how it sorts it. Uh, so let's go and find ah, supervisor D. So this is interesting. If you recall, um, we have changed the configuration of Unicorn from having one worker to three workers. And you can see here's supervisor D, the sort of parent process with the config file that we gave it. And then it ran unicorn here, it's child with the config file that we specified. And that's working, which is fucking fantastic. Um, we also said that there were three workers and it does appear that these workers are actually child processes. Um, I sort of thought they were, but I wasn't sure. Well, now we know there's one, two, three, the three that we said we wanted, which is cool. And they're all running with a config file that we gave them, which is also cool. So I'm quite happy about that. Now, let's make sure that our app works still. The count is 50, the count is 51. You can see I reloaded this page a couple of times. The count is 52. I don't know about you, but I find this quite satisfying. Um, so there you go. In this, uh, I guess video, we have reconfigured supervised D a little bit. We've added a unicorn config file where we can just treat blah, 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 tweak the config here in pure Python, deployed it, run it, and gotten some more workers. Um, we're nearly done with all this twiddling around with config files. There's one more thing that we're going to do, and that is set up some basic logging. And um, I think out of all the things, uh, logging that we're going to do logging is probably the bit that you'll appreciate the least now, but in a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of years, uh, I hope you'll look back and say, 
thank fuck I turned logging on early because it's really saved me a lot of pain. And that is the goal of this next video with logging is to save you a lot of pain. So I'll see you there.